there's something so charming about pleated or gathered lampshades and they're also a great way to add some color or pattern to a space. They can be quite costly though and so today I'll be DIYing my own. No sewing is necessary for this project and all we're going to need is an existing lampshade, some fabric, and a hot glue gun. I found this piece of fabric at my favorite discount fabric outlet and it's got this little coffee bean design on it which I thought was so cute. I also felt that the neutral tone would suit our living area really well. So to be safe, I recommend having enough fabric so that the width of it going horizontally is three times the circumference of the widest part of your lampshade. In my case, I did not buy enough so I ended up having to split up my fabric which I'm going to show you later how I did that. The length of the fabric that's going to go along the top and bottom of the lampshade should be at least an inch over the height of the shade. However, I would be generous and go up even more, maybe 2-3 to three inches if you're working with a tapered lampshade like I am. Alright, so we're going to start off by gluing one end of the fabric onto the lampshade and this is going to be our starting point. Then we're going to start folding the pleats and to glue it down, we're just going to add some hot glue gun on one end of the fabric. And once that's dry, we're going to do the same exact to the other end. And basically, you're just going to repeat this process to add all the pleats around the shade. As you can see, it's going to help to fold the pleat and leave a really strong crease first before gluing them on. I realized halfway that because my shade is tapered, I had to be really careful with how I fold my pleats in the smaller side compared to the wider side. So if you could imagine if this was to be sewn, the fabric would be scrunched up a lot more on the smaller end, creating really teeny pleats compared to the wider side where the pleats would be slightly wider. So as I was folding it, I made sure that the pleats would become slightly wider as they go towards the bottom. I hope I'm making sense here. It really helped to look at the lampshade from a distance, like a foot away, to make sure that every time I folded each pleat, I can check whether the pleats are balanced and straight instead of it being angled towards one direction. When I ran out of my first piece of fabric, I simply glued on the second piece and overlapped it. And then when I reached the very end, I tucked that fabric underneath and glued it down to make it look seamless. Here I'm adding some glue to the edge of the shade and I'm pulling the fabric as tightly as I can away from the shade and gluing it down. This step isn't totally necessary but I really wanted my pleats to look as tight as possible as they would if they were to be sewn. Then I trimmed the excess fabric and glued the edges over to the inside of the shade so that it can look clean from the outside. But I realized later that this actually made the edge of the shade look bulkier. So I do recommend just cutting the fabric to the very edge of where it's glued down for a more cleaner look. Lastly, for our shade, we're going to create the hems by cutting out small strips of fabric. Cut out enough so that you can fold the fabric over three times. And how much you cut really depends on how thick you want your hem to be. You can get really creative here by using different colored fabric or patterns. Now that we've got our hem, I'm just going to glue it over the edge of the shade going along the circumference. Almost like as if the hem is hot dog style folding along the edge. If I hadn't glued the edges over to the inside like I did earlier, I think I would have just added the hem along the outside edge without sandwiching it over. I 
I also took this opportunity to repaint the lamp body. I wanted something more neutral and muted, so the first thing I did was go in with some plaster. I'm using some leftover joint compound to uh, give the lamp body some texture. After I applied enough to uh, cover the entire body, I went in with some water to help smoothen it out. So by the end of this, I want this to look like a ceramic piece, so once the plaster dried, I went in with a darker color to mimic clay. And this is going to serve as the dark undertone of the piece. And then once that was dry, I went in with the final color. It took a few coats until I got the tone right. At first it was a little too dark and then I finally achieved this warm eggshell-like color, which is what I wanted. Lastly, I went in with some gloss finish to give it that glazed look. And that's it! We finally have our DIY pleated lampshade and our new lamp body. If you made it this far, please give me a thumbs up to let me know. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. I'm so curious to find out if this is a project that you would want to try at home. Let me know below. This was such an easy way to create this style of shade without having to sew. And it makes me want to try some other pattern and color combinations. Let me know if you'd want me to try a different kind of shade. I did ask in my community tab a few days ago which lampshade you would be if you could one for a day and the winner was the cute and ruffled one. This was after I had already started making this lampshade but it did make me wonder if I should also try a ruffled version. I think that one would be really fun to do too. I've also got this pleated lampshade that I did over on my channel which also does not require any sewing. I'll make sure to link that for you down below if you are interested in watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more home decor and lifestyle content and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.